Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. It is from the tree of life that we are granted a new heart. We own the old ones by pointing the finger at ourselves with a clenched fist, acknowledging our sinfulness and our responsibility. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us bow our heads in prayer. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Jeremiah, my favorite prophet, is on the scene tonight. But when Jeremiah is around, you know, things aren't going really well. Jeremiah is excited about the message he has to preach. The problem is the people don't want to hear it. And they don't want to hear it because this isn't the way God acts. Jeremiah is telling them that God has pretty much given up on all the ways that God tried to be present and to love the chosen ones of Israel. It didn't work out. Jeremiah is all excited. God has a brand new plan. And they're going, no, he doesn't. God always does things according to tradition. And Jeremiah pleads with them. Check out the new plan. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The letter to the Hebrews is a very long letter. In fact, many scripture scholars say the best way to appreciate it is to have somebody read the whole thing to you because it's a description of the priesthood of Jesus Christ and why that priesthood is very different from the priesthood described in the Jewish tradition. It paints an incredible picture of Jesus. But today, there is an image of Jesus rarely ever described. I invite you not only to hear the description, paint the portrait in your mind. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whoever loves their life 
loses it. Whoever hates their life in this world will reserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. And the Father will honor whoever serves me. I'm troubled now. Yet what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, Oh, an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus answered and said, This voice didn't come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death that he would die. The Gospel of the Lord, let us give thanks and Atlanta, 
another tragic shooting, wondering what the source of the reason behind it. It is not only the life lost by those women, as precious as that is, is what it does to all of us who witness that kind of horrendous tragedy and takes the life out of us. Eleanor Castro Associa was on her way to Chicago tomorrow in order to help her daughter pack up the new home that they're ready to move into was just about ready. And then the whole thing fell apart. One's plans for the future, suddenly the life is taken out of them when they crash and you have to start over again. Another gentleman prided himself in saying he wasn't worried about COVID. He didn't need a mask. He could handle this until he got it. And then two weeks later, died from it. The reality of what COVID continues to do, not only in our country, but in other parts of the world, it isn't done with us yet. It is still taking our life away from us. When I first moved into this area, I have a patio and I'm able to sit under this huge tree. And the first couple months I called that my God tree. It was like it was watching over me and protecting me. And now I've been there long enough to realize it's really an old tree. And a few years ago, one of the branches was blown off. And now it's just one side with another huge branch. And the last time we had strong winds, I was out there and I'm thinking, oh, if that tree would ever come down, my home would be destroyed. Well, yes, a Thursday there were 40 per hour winds. And all the trees in the, uh, my whole yard were all fine. Until I looked at the backyard. And that huge tree the major branch that gave it life and support was gone. But it didn't land on the house. It didn't land in the patio. It landed right across the yard and hurt nothing. But the sight of it and how close the reality of what would have happened if it had fallen just a few inches differently. It takes the life out of you. With those kinds of life experiences that take on different forms for all of us in different ways, we bring it all here. And like those Greeks, we look for the apostles and say, uh, excuse me, we'd like to see Jesus. We want to know how Jesus handles the reality of life when it's out of our control. When it takes literally our life away. And the Jesus they take us to is the Jesus whose portrait was painted by the writer of the letter to the Hebrews. It is about a Jesus in prayer. Where does Jesus take us in those moments, the very place he went as the reality of his death grew near? As the challenges of his ministry were overwhelming, he always withdrew to prayer. 
but the letter to the Hebrews describes the nature of that prayer. And it is very much in the style of what rabbis for generations describe as the essence of the stages of prayer. It begins in silence. And then it goes to an outward expression called loud cries. And then reaches its loftiest expression. When the life is taken out of us, when the unexpected happens, when we don't know how we are going to manage to get through till tomorrow. That common experience that has been a part of this pandemic for over a year continues. And the invitation to find Jesus is to discover that he is there. In the silence in which we don't even know what to ask for, in the loud cries of, why God is this happening? Until the ultimate tears, when it touches the very depths of our hearts. That's where we find Jesus. That is how Jesus responded. And throughout the story of the passion that we hear next week, we will walk that journey, we will enter into all of those uncontrollable situations right up until the end. And yet, all through that, the silence, the loud cries, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To the ultimate tears and the last breath. Jesus listened to God. That's the ultimate meaning of obedience. The reverence of the prayer of Jesus was allowing all of that to be expressed to the God that Jesus understood as the ultimate truth, the one who loved him the most. And that's why it's true on the fifth week of Lent, that the ultimate coming closer and closer to our God through Jesus leads us to the God who did something brand new, something that none of us did for God this week. But God did for us. God wrote his love in our hearts. God is closer to us than we are to ourselves. It isn't on a tablet, it isn't in a letter. God wrote God's love for us on, God, on our hearts. That's what Jesus opened himself up to in obedience, what he surrendered himself to. Father, take me from this hour. That's what he asked. That's the human, get me out of here. Let this cup pass. But for Jesus, it was the obedience that trusted that life would come out of death like the grain dies. And so he let it go to God. And the glory of God is to draw life out of that which appears to be death, as that which is unjust and unfair and shouldn't be. It is in the suffering, in the pain, in the surrender, the most difficult lesson of our lives is to learn how to die, to let it all go, and in the letting go, discover 
the new life that is forever. Let the church say amen. 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 The young men and women who answered that question as a part of their scrutiny named a lack of faith. They named the depression of their lives. They named being feeling irrelevant, being ridiculed for going to church. of dwelling too much on the past, valuing things and not people, being negative, the greed of their lives, relying on themselves, not God, not caring enough for those in need, allowing politics to rule instead of faith, being overly materialistic, unrelenting in guilt, the meanness, the arguing, the disrespecting of others, a lavish lifestyle, They felt they contributed to the darkness of the world, and it has taken the life out of them. We pray that the prayer of exorcism this weekend will remove all that evil and allow them to enter a brand new life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise and offer our prayers for all in need.
realize the bread is the work of human hands with the gift of the wheat. The grapes are crushed. The wine, the joy, the struggle of our lives, the money we worked hard for. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. As Jesus walked the way of his cross, he noticed the women crying. He saw Simeon assisting him. It was the help of others that allowed him to bear his own cross. We come to the table this day grateful for all the people week after week who stand by and support us. And in the times where we can't hardly bear the cross, they lift it with us. For all of them we give thanks. The Lord be with you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us follow before our God. The mystery of faith.
Christ, one with us in our suffering, one with us in our glory. Blessed are they who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. you close your eyes for a moment and in the silence of your heart offer your personal thanks that God has chosen to dwell in us that his glory is coming through us in the midst of our storm. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion. He is the one who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to keep in prayer Jim Burnell. Jim is the father of our Director of Christian Formation, Mary Sue Reitwell. She is in Florida with her siblings and with her mother, surrounding him with their love and care. He had a tragic accident this week that now is bringing him to his last hours. I was able to pray by phone with them. Him, 
I was able to see the family and they were able to see me. And we commended him to God. As she comes back to continue her ministry and trusting her father to God, we rejoice that even in the pain of letting go, it is God who is now receiving. And we pray he may have a happy and peaceful death through the intercession of St. Joseph. I also continue to remind you, beginning at 5 o'clock this coming Sunday, you can begin your reservations for Palm Sunday for the Easter Tree Lord. And the Easter liturgies again, 6 a.m. Sunrise Mass at St. John of Arc, 8 o'clock Mass here at St. Catherine's, 8.30 Mass at St. John of Arc, and 10.30 Mass here at St. Catherine's. All the other details are in the letter that you should have received this week. Um, continue now to let us know where your preferences are so that we may come together to celebrate these most holy days. And a common question I get at this time, what about those rice bowls, Father? We hope they are filled to overflowing, but this year we are going to ask that don't bring the actual rice bowl back. Uh, again, it's not a safe thing to be returning them in the midst of a pandemic. So we ask you to count the money at home, write out the check, just put in the memo area that it is for the rice bowl. 75% of that money does go to Catholic Relief Services to take care of the needs of the world. 25% will remain in the St. Vincent de Paul Societies of our two parishes. Again, that prayer, fasting, and almsgiving is now ready to yield a rich harvest. I invite you to rise for the blessing of the cross. Again, we lift high that cross by which our salvation is given. Bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. May the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, upon whom we have looked and trembled, free us from all sin. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. May this blood on which hung our salvation grant us joy when we are sad, Amen. hope when we despair, strength when we are weak, and in the face of death, life. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. And may the Spirit of God energize each of us to take up our own cross and walk in the ways of our God, bearing our cross and easing the burdens of others. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God come upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.